for joining us this afternoon. My name is John, and we have the great pleasure of having District 3 candidate Martin Hubbardy with us today. And we've got some questions for you. And well, to the start off the top is I want to say thank you for running. And uh, those of those people who care enough about their local community to run, my hat's off. It, uh, it is a, it's a tough process. You become the product. Sometimes that's new for people. Sometimes it's not. But my sincere thank you for running. Oh, thank you, John. Thank, and thank you. you for doing this. Thank you. All right, we've got some questions for you. And Great. here we go. What life experience have you had to have led you to feel so passionately about District 3 that you were running for office? And what has been your, your life journey to come to this point of running for office? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to break that into two parts, actually. Uh, I want to talk about my love for Calaveras first. And ultimately, uh, my family's been here since the gold rush. Um, and I grew up coming to Calaveras. Um, I'm 60 years old and I've been in Calaveras for 60 years. I grew up, I was born and raised in Sacramento, but we had the Hubbardy Ranch, which was on Fourth Crossing, which my great uncles ran, and we would come out almost every weekend with my father. And then my grandmother uh, bought a cabin in the 50s. It's the Rock House at the Cove in Lake Alpine. And she converted that into a cabin back in, well, it was, I think it was like 1955. And we had that for 40 years. So we spent our summers up at Alpine. And, and to me, Lake Alpine is Calaveras. I mean, we just, you know, the whole, that whole um, corridor, it just seems like it, it all belongs together. Um, I, um, I've been working here uh, for the past three years with the Visitors Bureau. Um, it's been a challenge to get through COVID. Um, it's um, you know that, that balance of keeping people um, happy that we are bringing people in to service our businesses at the same time not wanting people to come in. Right. It, it's been a real a real challenge. And, and what I would say is is uh, is partnerships have been really important to me and working with the people of Calaveras. And ultimately, when when the city wasn't going to be able to open up the museum. Um, you know, there was an old idea of the CDB moving in with the, the Visitors Bureau moving in with the museum, and I thought, gosh, that makes a lot of sense. Why, why would you pay me to market a town where the only attraction isn't open? And so we did that, and by doing so, we saved the city approximately, well, it's over $200,000 out of their budget and 30000 out of my budget. So um, that was sort of a natural progression to then move on to the chamber. I was a board member at the chamber, and then when Morgan Gatche left, um, I wanted to step in and keep her work going. And it, to me, um, it's, it's you know, keeping people all working together. And I think if we're all heading the same direction, we'll get farther. Uh, it's been a fantastic experience. Um, and ultimately, um, it's kind of led me to want to run because there have been so many offices that are going uncontested, and I just don't think that's right. Um, and this, to me, feels more like a calling than it does a career choice. Um, I love what I do. This just feels like a natural progression. And I love being in Calaveras. I mean, it's, it's a magical place. It's a place that's always been magical to me. I spent my formative years here, um, uh, most of my formative years, you know, driving a go-kart around the uh, dirt roads. And, um, and, to, and I just love being here. And, and to represent the people of District 3 would be my greatest dream. Question two. Do you think our county is healthy and successful? If yes, explain. If not, what would you do to change that? Are you talking about the county overall? Yes, because yeah. I think even though even if you're running for one district, in essence, yeah. you're representing those constituents in that district, but it is a county. I think know. that I think that the county is really healthy. I do. Uh, in working with the Visitors Bureau, uh, I work with all the destination marketing organizations along Highway 49. So we meet once a month. Um, it's, a, it's a group called the Gold Country Visitors Association, and there's a person like me in each one of those counties. And we get to sit down and, and talk about each other's issues and problems and cry on each other's shoulders. And I do think, I really honestly think that Calaveras is doing really well. Um, we have a, a, a thriving business community, um, and I'm doing everything I possibly can to bring people in to support our businesses, our restaurants, our museums, um, and working with the chamber, too, to, um, to make those businesses healthy. Question three. What's more important for our county right now? Building new homes and commercial space or rehabbing and expanding better, uh, better utilizing our existing homes and storefronts? Add to the housing affordability crisis in our county and in particular District 3, what ideas 
do you have to create opportunities for people who live and work here in Calaveras to have affordable housing? I don't think it's an either or. I think it's everything. I think you have to look at every possibility. Um, I have an employee that uh, works for me, doesn't make a lot of money, and unfortunately was going to move out of the, count, out of the state because she couldn't find housing here. And it became a problem that it was, you know, we got involved with it, with the office to try and find a place, and it's not easy. Um, and I don't think it's just low income, it's moderate income. There are people that are moving in that, that make a decent salary that still can't find a place to live. Um, I know that there's a housing specialist at the county who works very hard, and there is money there for developers, but I think that we need to, um, we need to investigate how we can get that investment into the county. I think we need to mitigate the, um, the problems that, uh, we need to mitigate the, the, the obstructions to investment. I think we need to reduce the impact fees. We need to look at all of the restrictions that are in place right now and really work with the private sector. Um, I think it's, it's important that we explore all avenues. I know the tiny homes were an issue that, that got voted out. I'd like to reinvestigate that. Um, you know, Habitat for Humanity. Um, Ultimately, uh, ADUs, accessory dwelling units. Um, I know that the county is working on that as well. The issue is not only with affordable housing. What is affordable housing? Because even if the short-term rentals, um, you know, we, we can get people, you know, to move out of some of the short-term rentals and make them long-term rentals, is it still affordable? Right. So uh, it's a huge issue. Uh, as I was talking about with the Gold Country Visitors Association, everybody's feeling this. It's 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 a statewide problem. Um, and ultimately, I think we just need to roll up our sleeves and figure it out. And I'll do my best. Question four. What do you want to make sure voters know about you? Ah. <laughs> how, how long have we got? <laughs> um, ultimately, I thought about this um, the other day. And ultimately, what I want to say is I studied diplomacy. And I really believe in... Um, in face-to-face -face meetings and really uh, resolving problems face-to-face -face and not necessarily resulting to a lot of uh, means that people use today. I still think that face-to-face -face is the way to deal with problems and issues. And I look forward, to, I mean, I know the board of uh, supervisors and I would look forward to, to meeting and resolving issues with them face-to-face. -face. Question five. What neighborhood do you live in? Why? What are your favorite places to spend time in our county and in District 3? Thank you. Um, I don't view myself as living in a neighborhood. I, vis I view myself as living in a community. Um, and that community is District 3. Um, I, um, when the ranch sold in the 90s and, the, uh, and Alpine sold, um, that was also in the 90s. And I felt um, so bereft not having Calaveras in my life. Uh, we did have, I still had ranch property, but it wasn't the same. And I came back to actually, because my father had passed away, I came back to deal with some of the things that, that were left from the ranch. And that's when I said, I really want to keep a foothold in Calaveras. So that was almost 20 years ago. And I walked into Century 21 one day, and Leanne Ashwanden was there. And I said, Leanne, what have you got that's you know, old, funky, whatever? And she said, well, there's this old powerhouse up the road. And I drove up and saw the old Utica powerhouse, and it was pretty thrash. And it was on its way to being Boy, it was. derelict. And uh, I mean, it was, it was derelict, but on its way to falling down. Yeah. And um, actually, repurposing. Repurposing buildings. Got it's it. a huge thing. I think it's a huge thing up the Highway uh, 3 corridor. Yeah. That we, are we, we, we need to look at repurposing that actually fits into the infrastructure that exists already. I think but, we're down to about our last minute. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So let me get going. Um, so ultimately, I would say that um, the Utica Powerhouse has been a dream. I've, I've been there for just about 20 years. Um, it's, um, it's a community, and it's, it's not just a neighborhood. And I would say my favorite thing to do in Calaveras, honestly, in the summertime, is to stop by Hinter House, grab a couple of California bucks, and go sit by the Stanislaus. I just, there's nothing better to me in this world. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you, John. It. And thank you for running. Thank you.